Good afternoon. My name is Judy Niffen. I'm a brand new member of AAUW, which is the American Association of University Women, uh, the local chapter here in Bennington. I'm also a brand new member of Scribble Sisters, which is a, a, a group that writes memoirs. Um, it is run by Kathy Wagonicht here. Wagonish. Wag oh, I mispronounced her name, Kathy Wagonicht, um, who is with me to talk about it and other things. So we'll get started. Um, Kathy, what, what gave you the idea to start Scribble Sisters? Well, I didn't. I didn't start it. I, I just got involved as soon as I heard about it. What happened was um, Ellen Berkeley Perry, who is a, a writer, uh, she's written a, a book about uh, memoirs of, of grandmothers that's tied in with um, cooking. Um, she conducted a, a little um, workshop for the AAUW almost two years ago in January um, and decided at that point that they do a workshop and have people just try writing some memoirs and, and got a whole bunch of people excited about it. Well afterwards Suzanne Kirkpatrick sent a message out to all the AAUW membership and said I'm thinking that we ought to have a, a group. Are you interested in joining? Well I hadn't attended the workshop but I was interested in joining so I sent a, a note immediately to Suzanne and said I'm in. And it was about March, I guess, of 17 when the, the group actually got going. And we started out about 10 people and we're up to 12 now, I think. And we've, I think we've decided 12 is about as, as good as we can do at one time. Because one of the things we do every, every two weeks when we get together is write and then read back what we write to each other. And if we got too many people, we'd be there all day trying to write and read back to each other what we've done. This is true. Uh, I find that we, when we get to somebody's house, and this rotates between the members, so whoever's house it is uh, held in gets to choose two or three topics to write about, and each writer can choose the topic. Uh, when we get together, being women, uh, we tend to talk about this, that, and the other thing, and finally, after Kathy. about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy will have a little alarm on her clock that says, "Being okay, now it's time to get down to the real subject of this meeting, and we do. Um, and we get to write for a period of time. Is it usually? About 30 minutes. 30 minutes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is challenging to conceptualize in your head what you want to say and write it down, make your corrections, cross things out, uh, you're, scri you're definitely scribbling. Um, yeah, the real challenge is when it comes time to read it back, half the time we can't read our own writing. <laughs> <laughs> right, yes. Or want to change things right at the moment. Or didn't get finished and have to tell the ending. <laughs> right, yes. We have, uh, and I have it here in my lap that Kathy brought happily, we have the first book that we have put together as a group. Uh, it's got, I think, pretty much everybody represented. Uh, poetry, little stories, uh, biographies. A couple of essays. Essays, yeah. And um, one, one thing about it, when we decided to do it, we decided what we wanted to do was to use it as a fundraiser. So all of the proceeds, after we paid for the production of the book, all the proceeds went to um, the a local chapter of AAUW's scholarship fund. So every, um, every cent that we made above the cost of production uh, funded uh, some local scholarships for non-traditional women students, and that was that was pretty cool. The other thing that's pretty cool is we don't have any of them left. We we sold out. Um, 
so we we did pretty well with our with our sales. I think we contributed about a thousand dollars to the to the scholarship fund. Yeah. We're talking now about our next volume, which will probably come out in the early summer. Right. And will that be essentially the same kind of writing, or are we looking for a a different slant? I, let me see this. The way we organized this this time, it wasn't thematic at all. It was just whatever every person wanted to put in it. And so it's organized by chapters of the writers. And what we've talked about doing for the next book is to um, have it somehow thematically grouped. Um, maybe the whole thing would be around a theme like, I don't know, childhood memories or seasonal activities or whatever, or maybe we would just have chapters that are about the same themes, regardless of which authors are providing the, the, the pieces within the chapter. Uh, we'll wait and see what we get, I guess. Okay, so this is a work in progress here. Um, <clears throat> one thing that I, I would like to say about the process of writing is that um, it's something I have done for years, usually to work through problems that I'm having. If I wake up at three o'clock in the morning, uh, stewing over something, I'll get up and get my yellow line paper and write it down. So I find it is a short jump to writing stories about memoirs, about family members, um, or about local involvements. It really helps you to think through, put it in context, think through what it means to you and where you're going with it, which is something I would never consider valuable until I started doing it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more of an extension of keeping a journal because what we're doing now is even a step further than that because you're writing it for public consumption. Mm -hmm. So you hope that not only are you working through something for yourself, but that it has some applicability to somebody else. Right. Yep. And that that sometimes gets a little bit scary if you wonder about how how revealing you really want to be about the self. Yes. <laughs> well, and speaking of that, I, I'm right now reading Kathy's uh, newest book, Leaving Independence. Uh, independence. Um, it's Independence, can't, mm -hmm. Missouri, right. So, which is a, a memoir uh, and amusing and touching and um, how has that been for you? Hmm. I started it, it's about when my parents, we had to pa pack my parents up and move them out of their home and they gave up their independence and moved to North Carolina to be near my sister and her, her children. Um, so we left, we left independence and they left their independence. And it was about that, it started with that process of packing up a house they'd lived in for 57 years. And then it sprung from there to all the memories that were triggered by things that we found in packing up the house. And I started it, that was in, we, we moved them in 2011. I started it right at the beginning of 2012. And I didn't get very far on it until I, I got into the, the Scribble Sisters group. And at that point, um, I actually started using the time, our writing times, to write little vignettes that w I then would develop into chapters in, in my book. Um, and it's been a lot of fun. It's, it's brought back a lot of, of memories from childhood and, and m made me think about my relationship with my relatives as I tried to describe my grandmothers and my grandfathers and how our relationships differed between the various sets of aunts and uncles and grandparents. And so it was a, an inner exploration too in the writing of it. Yep, yep. 
And it also, uh, some of the first chapters uh, described working with your sister, trying to clean the house out. Right. And of course, that brought into sibling relationships. Um, and it is amusing and delightful and poignant and uh, as wonderful to read as it is a process to, to write and go through. One of the things that I found in, in digging through all that was the story my dad had, <coughs> had written in the 90s and he had asked me to type for him and I had forgotten about it. But in going through the stuff that we gathered and cleaned out of their house, I found it again. And so I incorporated that into to my book. So his story of growing up on a farm in Missouri and joining the army and going fighting in World War II is incorporated into the book too. Mm, yeah, wow. Um, I, one thing that I, I wondered, because I've found this <coughs> with my own writing and sharing it with my two brothers, is that they sometimes will not recognize things that I've pointed out or have been the central part of my story. And I realize that if they were to write things down, I would not recognize part of what they were writing about. Oh, which says that we, we absorb our family history in different ways, um, which is interesting. To yeah, my sister and I, I've let her read some of the pieces of it. And she'll either say, yes, that's right, or it didn't happen that way. <laughs> or it didn't happen at all. What are I'm you talking friends. about? That didn't happen right. <laughs> In fact, all of all my older relatives of the generation before me, I have only one uncle still li alive. And I sent him a copy of the book and said, you're the only one alive who, who really knows if I'm lying. <laughs> right, right. So we'll see. Yeah. Well, it makes you wonder what a lie is, too, actually. <laughs> yeah, well, as, as lots of psychological studies have proven, memories um, are, are not facts. Right, <laughs> right. And even in the same person, they change right. over time. Right. Yeah. And sometimes I think I remember things that maybe I've just heard about. Yeah. You know, that were family stories or something that I've incorporated and think that they happened to me and they might not have. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think dreams could be brought into that at all? Possibly. Possibly. Yeah. So. Well, it's going to be Christmas present for all the family. So that's, that's I just got them in the mail last week. So everybody's got, getting one for, for Christmas. Good. So we'll see whether there's smokes blowing from North Carolina when my <laughs> sister reads it or <laughs> whether she uh, she agrees or wants to fight about it. Yeah, yeah. So this is, this is one delightful part of AAUW, local chapter. And... Uh, yeah, and the fun thing is by doing this, those of us who were in the writing group probably would never have gotten to know each other very well. Right otherwise right but when you meet twice a month and write and read what's in your heart to each other you get to know each other in a deeper way than just chatting over at over cookies at a meeting mm -hmm. absolutely and i think we've gotten to be a pretty close-knit group because of that yes we have yeah we just this last time we met we did a, a special project that Kathy introduced to us, which I've done before and probably you have too, uh, which is, well, you describe it, Kathy. Well, I call it a progressive story where you start, um, everybody takes out a piece of paper and writes one sentence on it and then passes it to the person to their right. And each time you receive a paper, you write another sentence following the story that's being developed until you get back to your own. Well, there were, I think, nine of us there, so we had nine sentences that made up nine different stories, and they were really fun. Um, you never knew where they were going to go because whoever had the, the next sentence could twist it in some way, but it was, it was really fun. Yes, yeah. The fun part of it is that you're really encouraged to let it blow off in some other direction, and... Uh, and to let your humor out. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, we were all laughing heartily through this. this and we weren't even drinking. Right. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we were laughing too hard right. to drink. Right, I think that yeah. was it. <laughs> yeah. But it's been a really good thing. It's been a way that I've gotten to know as a pretty newcomer. I've only lived here for four years, so it's been a way for me to get acquainted with people yeah. here. I would encourage people to join their own groups and just, if they want some advice, contact us. We'd be happy to get you started. But our group has gotten so big, we really can't take new members. Um, but somewhere between six and 10 is probably a good number. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and you don't have to be expert writers. I mean, it, the, this group of people are people who want to write something, mainly memoirs and mainly for their family. I don't think any of us feels like we're going to be the next New York Times best, bestseller. But right. Um, yeah. You know, publishing something like this through um, Amazon's Create Space tool is is not an expensive undertaking. You only pay for the books you buy, so you don't have to have a huge investment to make that work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Kathy actually um, is very familiar with how to get a book published. Yeah, um, I had done that before. Yep, and that was very helpful to the rest of us. Should we want to undertake that? Mainly, it's just a lot of picky stuff, formatting and for sending things back and forth online to the to publishing house. Yep, but anybody can do it. Yeah, if you got a computer and can use Word. Yeah, yeah. So what else does our local chapter of AAUW focus on? Um, well, there's a book club, a book group that meets That's right. once a month, I think. I haven't been. Um, Are you part of that? No, no, I haven't neither been. am I. Uh, I think it's on Wednesdays, and I think it's at in Arlington at the library. Our group is really for Bennington County, so we have members in Arlington and Pownall and Bennington and Woodford, and we even have one member in our writing group from Troy who right. just joined us. Um, and so sometimes it's a little difficult for her to get there. And one of our members lives in New Hampshire half time, so she's only there, only here for the summers. Mm. Um, other than that, there are, w m there are monthly programs that AUW puts on. Um, there are private party or private meetings and, as well as public meetings. Uh, last year, right. the, the woman from Turkey. Mm -hmm. I can't Is remember her name. I yeah, right, she left right, right after the um, revolution or, or the attempted coup in Turkey, and she's teaching at Bennington College now. I, I can't remember her name. But she talked about the, her, her need to, to get out of Turkey to, and seek asylum, and the trip and the, the way that she was able to get here. And she had gone, she had been an a, a international student and had attended Bennington College. So when she needed to get out and have a place to go, Bennington College said, come on, and facilitated getting her away and here into a safe place. Right, and otherwise, as I remember, it would have been very difficult and very chancy for her to have gotten away. Right, because she was one of a group of academics who had written a letter um, against the government, and so they were being right. jailed, Right, and she needed to get away. Yes. And so she she's, a, she's part of AEW now. Yeah, right, right. And family, Still back? I think so. In Turkey? I think so, yeah. 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 So it's been a really, um, it's been a good thing for me to join. Mm -hmm. That area of town you live in, practically everybody there is in AAUW. I do. <laughs> I live in Chester Knoll, and it, there must have what, four or five of us mm -hmm. that are part of AAUW, which is wonderful for car rides. So there is one other group that I'm aware of in our local group that, that is trying to get going, and that is um, a group to visit art events and museums in the area. And uh, I, I can't say I'm an artist right at the very moment, but I have been an artist, and so I'm very interested in that part of it. And we have wonderful art resources all around us. From 
the Bennington Museum to the Clark to lots of things so close that yep. we just, just Williams don't College. always take the Williams College, Bennington College. Yep. Um, right. We need to take more advantage of the the cultural things that are in the area. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And another thing that we recently went to, some of us, was um, the Bennington School for Girls. Right. Which is a, a school that works with girls who um, are not able at the moment in their lives to attend regular school and participate in their families. Um, so they live and work at these, this, the Bennington School for Girls. And what a fantastic organization it is. Yeah, I, I miss that one. Well, I mean, they, they work with these children uh, psychologically, creatively, educationally, they get a, a, an educational system uh, or an educational coursework that is certified by the state. Um, what age girls are they? They are, I believe, around 11 through, I want to say 19. So I was fascinated by that. Yeah, I lived not too far from it. And one afternoon, somebody knocked on the door and said mm -hmm. she was lost. And could I help her find her way home? And that's where she lived. <laughs> right. <laughs> and she found her way home. Uh -huh, right? She did. Yeah, yeah. So these are some of the things you learn about with AA, the local AAUW chapter, which I'm enjoying tremendously. So I think that wraps up what we have to say. Um, we thank you for listening. And if you are curious to learn more about AAUW, um, I have to think of what that American Association University of Women. University Women, you can go online to aauw.org, which tells you more about the, the national organization um, and how to become a member, and uh, it would refer you to the Bennington branch as well. Right. The only requirement to be an American University woman is an uh, American woman who, or, or a woman, <laughs> who went to university. Or and, college. Or college and has a degree. Yep. Thank you.